listening to Coffee with Kenobi. You are with Dan Z and Corey Club, the podcast you're looking for. This is. <laughs> yes. For an entire generation, people have experienced Star Wars the only way it's been possible on the TV screen. But if you've only seen it this way, you haven't seen it at all. This is the podcast you're looking for. We've been waiting for you. The force is strong here, even stronger than the coffee. Welcome to Coffee with Kenobi. Here are your hosts, Dan Z and Corey Club. Hello, this is Dan Z, and welcome to show number 29 of Coffee with Kenobi, a Star Wars podcast that analyzes our favorite saga in a whole new way. With me is my good friend and co-host, Corey Club. Hello, everybody. Thanks to all of you, December was our most downloaded month we've had. Our Coffee with Kenobi family keeps growing with each and every show, and we look forward to continuing to extend the conversation as we get closer to Celebration Anaheim and The Force Awakens. If you get a chance, please leave us a review on iTunes. The more reviews we get, the more likely we'll show up on iTunes searches. We truly appreciate the support. In today's show, we get to share a cup of coffee with Rob Wainfer of the Bearded Trio as we take a look back at 2014 in Star Wars and discuss what we are most looking forward to in 2015. We will also introduce our topic for show number 30. And now, let's see what's brewing in the Star Wars universe this week. This is Rob Wainfer of the Bearded Trio, and you're listening to Coffee with Kenobi with Dan Z and Corey Club. This is the podcast you're looking for. Luke, you're going to find that many of the truths we cling to depend greatly on our own point of view. I must be allowed to speak. You've taken your first step into a larger world. Our topic for show number 29 is the year in Star Wars 2014. What news stories excited you the most? How did you feel about the way the information was released? What collectibles did you find the most appealing? On today's show, we talk with the great Rob Wainfer of the Bearded Trio. Rob's excellent blog, The Bearded Trio, is a wonderful site that covers the latest in Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and John Williams. The site consistently features quality information and entertainment on all the things we love, and he even finds time to blog for us once a month. And as Coffee with Kenobi listeners know, offers your espresso shot with The Bearded Trio on every episode of Coffee with Kenobi. Rob is an integral part of fandom, and we are happy to speak with him. Welcome, Rob. Oh, welcome. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm very, very honored to be on Coffee with Kenobi. Thank you. Oh, well, we are, yeah. we are very excited. It's been a long time coming. Yes, yes. It, it has. It has. Yeah. Well, and what's fun, too, is that every week, you know, Corey edits the show, and uh, we listen to him, of course, and, um, and we get to hear from you every week on, on Coffee with Kenobi, and they actually finally get a chance to speak with you. It seems like such a – we always say this about guests, but it's, it's probably the most true for you. It's been a long time coming, and all you've done yeah, for yeah. our show and, and um, just for Star Wars fandom and, in general, it's, uh, it's, it's a real honor, sir. Oh, well, thank you very much. I, I mean, I, I love being part of the Coffee with Kenobi team. But, um, and to finally talk to you guys, um, I'm very honored. It's, it's been, what, over a year? Yeah. 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 It, it definitely has. <laughs> I, I'm really excited to talk to you guys and to talk Star Wars with you as well. Yes, yes. And, and what a year in Star Wars it was. Um, and, we, um, and for those of you listening, we, what we initially did was we pulled up StarWars.com's biggest moments of 2014. Mm-hmm. And, and then we went through and, and looked at, at the shows. And Corey, did you see how many shows we put out <laughs> last year? Uh, we, we have, well, I don't know. If, uh, quick I count counted. Here. Did you I count them? Okay. 55. 55, yeah. That wow. includes Rebel Reactions and our uh-huh. Clone Wars and our and Winding chats. Down with Williams. Yep, yeah, that's impressive. Will, yep. It's crazy. Um, and for a bi-weekly podcast, that, I believe that's more weeks than there are in the year. So. <laughs> <laughs> we were busy, and I don't see it slowing down. So we'll just jump right into January. Our first show we had, we had, a, we had our Razor's Edge chat with Martha Wells. Uh, when we talked with her about her awesome book, uh, we had shows 10 and 11. 10 was uh, Anakin Skywalker with Becca Benjamin, who, of course, writes for Coffee with Kenobi and the Cantina cast and the Beauty Trio. She's a busy lady. Yes, yeah, she is, yeah. We had um, Darth Maul. Uh, the news that Darth Maul is continuing his story in comics. Mm-hmm. We learned that Marvel was getting Star Wars comics. Show 11 had The Psychology mm-hmm. of Villains with Andrea Letamendi, which was an amazing show. And then we had our book chat with Joe Schreiber where we talked lockdown. So, guys, what stands out for you about uh, January? 
Yeah, I would say I, I enjoyed talking to the authors about their books. Um, you know, Martha Wells was awesome, and so, so was Joe Tri- Schreiber. And um, and it, I mean, I just I just look at some of the stuff, and, and and even just the first month we're talking about here, it's like, man, what a powerful month with some great guests. You know, Becca was awesome. Uh, Andrea was awesome on, on her show. She's got the the Batman show that really break down every episode of the old Batman '90s uh, animation series, and that's a great show. And it was wonderful to talk to her and get her her perspective on some of the villains and the psychology behind that. I just just were living some of this stuff. Uh, is is and excellent. I mean, like you said, Dan, we've got tons of different shows under our belt uh, this this year alone. But uh, yeah, the, these are great shows in themselves. It just goes to show how um, lucky, I mean, you, to have Becca Benjamin on Coffee with Kenobi, I mean, she's so in, insightful as well, you know, um, and to have you on, in, on the first show in, well, in January as well, um, I feel like I've got something to, uh, to live up to for the first show in January <laughs> in 2015. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. At the time of recording this, it is January 1 for us, and yeah, when I, when I look back to it, I find it staggering that... It was so long ago that we did these shows. It seems like mm-hmm. even longer, if that makes any sense at all. But you know, talking to authors is always great, and yeah. and and two uh, two strong females uh, in, in fandom, Andrea and, and Becca. So it was an honor to chat with them, and we found out about Marvel getting Star Wars comics, which of course we're going to be big. getting ready to see those real soon. It is really big. Yeah, I mean. Um I, I'll be honest. I mean, I don't. I don't read a lot of graphic novels. I mean, there's my confession. Um, uh, but um, <laughs> when when I was a child, I'm, I'm very I'm very much a retro fan. And when I was a child, I did actually read the, uh, you know, the old vintage Marvel Star Wars comics. And and for me, that that was big news to get Marvel back doing the Star Wars comics. Um, you know, I I will probably be getting. The first Marvel Star Wars comics, <laughs> for sure. Mm-hmm. Can't, oh, yes. I can't wait for them. Yeah, that was big news. It'll it'll be hard. It'll be hard. You'll be hard pressed to find a, a Star Wars fan who won't flock to comic book stores to see these things because not only are we going to get to see the continuing adventures of Star Wars and Darth Vader and all the characters that we love, but we know it's canonical, which that means a lot to mm-hmm. me. Yeah, 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 and and, and the classic. Um, uh, covers of the Marvel Star Wars comics as well. I mean, I, I've, I've, I've got memories of those, and I just can't wait to see them again. It's going to be great. Uh, you know, moving into February now, we're talking about last year, and we had one of our, one of our bigger guests on. We got to talk to uh, James Arnold Taylor, uh, the voice of yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was a big big one for us because I know Dan and I had a kind of a, a want list when we started uh, Coffee with Kenobi. And, um, you know, Jat was up there at the top, and we really wanted to talk to him. We got a chance to do that. It was I think for us was really great uh, to, to to talk to him and get his perspective on the Clone Wars, uh, also his career. Um, we we got to meet Chopper for the first time. Uh, they announced mm. announced that yeah. um, Craig Dixon, who uh, had joined us uh, for Rebels Reactions, uh, for I think it was our first show. Uh, we kind of broke down some of the the characters that have been announced so thus far for that for that animated series. And then for show 13, we talked with our good friend Jeff McGee uh, from Assembly of Geeks um, and talking toys, uh, talking about Star Wars toys. I mean, that was a lot of fun to break it down. You talk about our childhood. You're talking about, Rob, our, our, your childhood as far as comics go. You know, talking about toys is right up there as well. You know, as, as far as talking oh, about you know, different things as far as, uh, you know, what toys to play with as a kid or what we grew up with yeah. and different lines yeah. there. Well, uh, well, from, yeah, I mean, for me... Um I'm surrounded right now in my what I call my geek room, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> and I'm surrounded by uh, my kind of Star Wars figures collection, uh, the vintage Star Wars collection, and and for me that was my expanded universe uh, as a kid. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, I loved that. Um, I, I I I just love anything kind of Star Wars, anything vintage. Um, so uh, and to get a scoop as well in February to get James Arnold Taylor on your show. <laughs> I, I was just I was just blown away by that. <laughs> that oh, that was man. incredible. <laughs> that was that was uh, I remember that so well because when we started to do that, like uh, Corey and I were talking before, as we always do, and my stomach started to hurt because I was so nervous <laughs> and excited. And that doesn't really happen to me very often. And, and I just thought, oh my gosh, we get to have Obi Wan Kenobi. When we first came up with the idea, and Corey came up with the name Coffee with Kenobi, but I thought, what if something we could get. James Arnold Taylor to to do an intro for us, and then when he did, it was just 
it was an electric moment. That that interview really set the stage for us as far as us feeling comfortable and feeling like, hey, mm-hmm. we can um, get a chance to talk to these people that we admire and we've always looked up to. So that was that was really huge for us. That was very exciting. James Arnold Taylor's Obi Wan Kenobi. Sorry, the really bad impression. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> um, is one of my favorite Star Wars characters in the Star Wars universe. I thought, I thought you'd done such a good job of Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, full of depth, um, really deep. Uh, and I love the voice as well. Uh, fantastic. Um, and I, I just, I miss, I miss the Clone Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah. I did too. He, he adds, he, just like so many other characters in Clone Wars, yeah. they added so many dimensions to those mm-hmm. characters and really brought them to life in a way that even, I think even the staunchest of prequel haters would be hard pressed that they really took the time to watch Clone Wars and enjoy it. Oh, I absolutely. think they would change their mind. Absolutely. I, th- I think, um, I mean, I, I like the prequels anyway, but I think um, thanks to the Clone Wars, I think the prequels has become uh, in many ways richer than the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. I agree. You, you, you've had so many more hours in the prequel universe. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and I gotta, you've got to thank Clone Wars for that. Very much so. And I, and I know, Corey, you mentioned um, talking to Jeff, who's been such a great friend of the mm-hmm. show, too, and in uh, Assembly of Geeks and in his writing for us as well. And then finding out that the Clone Wars Season 6 was announced, it was rumored for so long, and then we got it. And it certainly lived up to the hype and probably surpassed it, I would say. I, 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 I've just recently uh, gone back and watched some of the, uh, the last episodes of the Clone Wars, especially the... Uh, the Yoda story arc, mm-hmm. you know, the last three episodes. Um, I watched those over the last few days. And I personally think um, that, that was good enough uh, to be a theatrical release. Mm-hmm. I did too. Yeah, I, I thought it was incredible. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the script, uh, the animation, um, and the music, the soundtrack mixed with John Williams. Oh, I got, I got goosebumps just thinking about it right now. I know, I know, and and just all the things that added to the force and, and the conversations yeah. we had because of that was were phenomenal. Yeah. So, so then we jumped we jumped into March, um, another nice month uh, in Star Wars. We had we had a sort of a full of Sith, um, two for the price of one. We had Mike Pilot on show fourteen. We had Brian Young on fifteen with Mike. We talked about Vader, of course. And then we talked with Brian Young about the prequels. I really couldn't think of anyone better to talk about the prequels. And then we had another um, uh, important thing for us as far as Rebels goes. We got to talk to Greg Weissman. And it's when you, when you schedule these interviews and you interact with, with these um, Star Wars dignitaries and celebrities, it's, it's really a treat because you get to see what they're like. And, and they're as advertised and, and they're, they're very personable and warm. And Greg had a, a nice enthusiasm for us. And that was a... A very unique show for us too, because um, we had the distinction of calling Lucasfilm by mistake. Yeah, <laughs> because, because really? yeah, yeah. We did. yeah, we had when you when you talk to them, you know, they they have very strict guidelines about how you communicate with them, which makes sense. I mean, I'm sure they're yeah, you know, okay. they want their own privacy and they sure. deserve it. My goodness, for for all that they do, they're they're human too, and and so we got disconnected, and there was a little number that popped up. And I thought, oh, we can't lose Greg. We got to try to call him back. So we called, and, and the phone answered, and it was hello, Lucasfilm, and and Corey and I. I mean, we were <laughs> doing kind of lost it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh, and we had that. We had that in the blooper. We may release someday, but we thought. I said, uh, dude, I, I just called uh, Lucasfilm. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. I don't believe that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> it, really was. it really was. Of course, I did save the number in my phone. Yeah, I bet you did. On his yeah, hand. I, written on his hand right now. That's yeah. right. I, yeah, and whenever I sweat, it smears. So that's not gross at all. <laughs> um, uh, we also had something important. In show 14, Rob had a, a, a pretty important interview that it's even more important now. Rob, talk to us about that. Yeah, I, I got to meet uh, Chris Monk at um, London Film Comic Con. Uh, and what a great guy he was. Um, he, he's got, a, a, you know, he had a, a wicked sense of humor. Um, and just, just, uh, just being able to talk to him, um, I was in awe, really. Um, I was shaking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, because, um, you know, I, I, I grew up with these people. And, you know, and, and Chris Monk, um, you know, he, he was just such a down-to-earth guy to talk to. Um, I, I love the guy. I love the guy. Uh, Rach was with me, standing by my side, and um, 
uh, you know, he's kind of kind of flirting a little bit, and uh, I I love the guy. You know, he's such a down to earth guy. Well, as we uh, keep on rolling here with uh, some of the stuff we're talking about here. Uh, April rolls around, and we got to talk to uh, two of our bigger fans on on Twitter. We, w- w- I've noticed too, as, as Coffee Kenobi rolls along, uh, we get to connect with some great folks online on Twitter, on Facebook, and the people that interact with us. And one of our biggest one was uh, the wrestler TNA Gunner, um, and his buddy Chad talked to us. Um, uh, it was, we call it Dark Coffee. It's because they're they're big Sith fans, and they had a good time talking <laughs> to us. It was a blast. I mean, they, I mean, talking to anybody, we could talk to so many people. Whether they're fans or producers or whoever, and, and I think it's just a blast. Even before we got talking to Rob today, we were just excited to, to talk and, and interact. And and you know, moving on to some of the shows we had that month, uh, we had show sixteen with Concetta Parker. Uh, obviously, she's a huge fan. Uh, does a lot of interactions with uh, Ranch Obi Wan and helping yes, helping yes. out there. And she's great. She's just just to just to contact her and get to know her over over the year or so that we've been doing this. Yeah, uh, it's she's just, become a friend. Yeah, I mean, she's it's just, just a, she's a wonderful human being. It is, it truly is, and and uh, you know, moving with seven show seventeen, we got to talk to uh, Paul McDonald, who who wrote the Star Wars Heresies and 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 his his fandom and, and how we got to put that together, which was such an incredible book. It's in itself as far as breaking down the the uh, the prequels uh, and kind of the I don't know some of the stuff that we like to try to do on Coffee with Kenobi is break down kind of the mythology and the background and 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 the just different essences of of Star Wars and he was great to have on for show eighteen we had uh, you know the cast was was uh, announced earlier that that spring and we had to talk about that which was a blast to do and and just be able to, to talk Star Wars and have so many things pop up uh, even you know this early in the in the year last year uh, was great and, and exciting for for Star Wars fans. Well, that was such an incredible show because in, in the span of a week, we learned the cast of Episode 7 because mm-hmm. the title wasn't released yet. We found out what happened uh, or what happened to the Expanded Universe. We had Christian Blavelt on uh, to talk to us about that, um, cultural editor of the BBC. And that was a huge treat to talk with him. So I got to talk to an esteemed guest as well as talk about these monumental things happening. And, and the, the ripples uh, from E, which is now Legends, I think are still feeling... Um, their impact around mm-hmm. fandom, even though I think that we've come to a place of acceptance. And then we had Scott Murray on, and God bless him. He, um, he of course, Assembly of Geeks and, and a, a great guy, a great friend of the show as well. And we've been having him walk through the films, uh, starting from Return of the Jedi, moving backwards. And we had him scheduled to talk to Empire Strikes Back. That was going to be our main feature. And then, you know, oh, yeah. Here's the cast of episode seven. Here's this, yeah, here's this show, image. Yeah. yeah, so you have to go with that. But another exciting year. There were no April Fools in April. Star Wars, <laughs> were there? No, no, none. I, I find that um, on the subject, Concetta Parker. I get the impression she's one of the most busiest people on the internet. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the quick fire questions that Concetta did for me uh, a while back for the the Bearded Trio website. And did, did you know that she um, uh, she's going to kill me for this? Um, <laughs> she ended uh, she ended up she fainted in front of Jerry Bruckheimer. Oh, did she really? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <What laughs> well, I'm just looking at her, I'm looking at her answer now because I, I asked the question: What was the most embarrassing moment of your life? And uh, I, she is going to kill me for this. Um, and she said, um, I, "I was working on an event for Disney and I had no chance to eat or rest." the entire day, proving that she's one of the busiest people. And after 10 hours of going nonstop, I ended up fainting right in front of Jerry Bruckheimer. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's so, classic. Uh, sorry. So he, slightly, off, slightly off topic. No, no that's perfect. <laughs> I, I, that's kind of my – when I think of Bruckheimer, I, I pretty much fainted too when I look at um, some of the Transformers films. <laughs> yeah. But not, not in a good not way. Not a good way, yeah. No. Well, you know. Totally, totally with you on that one. We could, yes. do, a, we could do a whole show on that. <laughs> oh, you bet. We could. The first one was great, and then they just went down the toilet further and further. But, you <laughs> well, know, enough of my subtlety. Yeah. <laughs> that's where we're different, guy. I don't like the first one either. But there we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, we, then we, get, we get to May, and we did something we wanted to do our first year. We just didn't get a chance. We were very much still kind of learning the ropes. And in many ways, we still are, of course. But uh, we had our May the 4th show, and that was a, an exciting one because we had – Corey and I from Central Illinois, and then Ed Dallas from Australia, and Mark Dubold from across the pond. And 
that was an exciting show because we got to combine our loves of Han Solo and Indiana Jones into one blockbuster episode for May the 4th. And, and we had a lot of fun with that. I mean, they're, they're great guys as well. And that was a great time. We had a, a very important show come out with our, our very first Winding Down with Williams special. Rob, how did that come to be? Because it was, it was certainly wonderful. And uh, it certainly brought me a lot of peace of mind as I was grading or just relaxing. And, and, and people loved it. Well, my my job um, entails me going around in the va- in a in a in a van a lot, and um, I listen to uh, classic FM, and um, I find it quite relaxing uh, to listen to that station in the morning. And I have somebody on, and they so they just have an hours of just relaxing music, and this person, you know, softly speaking, introducing each piece. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if we could just have an hour of or so of, of just John Williams? Um, so I thought, well, it would be even better if we could just get the rendition, uh, some of the best fan renditions of John Williams. Uh, so yeah, that's how that, that came about. And, um, I, 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 I love just browsing YouTube, listening to, uh, John Williams, especially renditions by fans. So I thought like, I want to pour all this together. Uh, so that's where I thought, uh, let, let's get that show together. And it was it was great, and of course we'll talk about that as we as we move along through the year. But we also had a we got to have on Rebels reactions. We got to have Vanessa Marshall, and that was a huge thrill. She is, of mm, course, yeah. you know, an incredible ambassador for Star Wars and fandom, and one of the nicest people you'll ever get the chance to speak with. A genuine soul, a huge Star Wars fan, a good person. Huge, so, huge, huge, she's a huge Spielberg fan as well. By the way, is she really? She is, yeah. <laughs> doesn't doesn't surprise me at all. It's going to be fun to get a chance to meet her at Celebration. And then uh, May was also important because it was our one-year anniversary, and that was an amazing show. We had uh, a lot of people sending us their well wishes, and we had a lot of fun bumpers to play, and we got to talk to Steve Sansui. That was, Corey, that was probably, mm-hmm. we had James Arnold Taylor and Steve, and at that point we thought, oh my goodness, we, we could yeah. barely contain our yeah. excitement wow. because that was that was big. That was so exciting. And well, he was a wonderful guy. Also, yeah, like we talked about getting some of these big names that we're talking about. These people were genuine. Uh, just to talk to you uh, like you're, you know, we've been friends for years. Even, you know, yeah. like Steve would just come on and be like, hey, you know, let's just hang out and let's talk about Star Wars. And that's exactly what, again, you know, what we want to do with our, our podcast was have friends come together and just if you're sitting at a coffee shop to talk about Star Wars. And mm-hmm. everybody we've talked to, uh, just fit that mold perfectly, and and we just have had a blast. Uh, we've had great, uh, you know, other fans on that have joined us along the way. Uh, you know, Aaron Harris uh, did Star Wars Weekends this year and broke that down on our on his blog, kind of every every weekend that he hit uh, some of the people he got to meet and interact with, and he came on and kind of gave us a recap of that. And his excitement was ecstatic, and mm-hmm. it was just easy to feel that, you know, and. and you know, just some of the folks have gone out this year and, and, and just reported on uh, events for us or Comic Cons and stuff. Have always We've always wanted to get them on and get them, you know, a chance to be able to, to kind of give us, you know, their fandom and how they experienced it and, and give us their, their background as far as, you know, what, you know if we can make it to the event, they, they can enjoy it and, and have a good time. And, and let's be honest, Aaron, uh, I mean, besides, again, we keep saying this, but because... Like you said, we wanted to do this to um, be a part of the community and embrace the community and, and mm-hmm. just make sure everybody got a voice. Aaron set the bar for uh, reporting and for being a contributor to Coffee with Kenobi. I mean, uh, they, were, they were awesome. Yes, like his, yeah. the videos and his blogs and, and the people he got to meet. Uh, he, he, got, he got an impromptu conversation with James Arnold Taylor. He yes. ran into Tracy Canobio. Uh, he's met uh, Trisha Barr and Trisha Delgado and Eric Geller. Fingertip, fingertips away from Mark Hamill, too. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the good folks from Skywalking Through Neverland. And he's just um, – he was he was amazing. And it, I got such a big kick out of Star Wars Weekends because even though I didn't get to be there, just checking our Twitter feed, seeing yes. his pictures, yeah. it just he makes you feel a part of it. So uh, we tip our fedora, Aaron, because he was awesome. As you say, he definitely raised the bar. Very much so, very much so. And then uh, you know, halfway through through the the year there, uh, we're in July. Uh, we get uh, ta- June. We're June. Oh, I'm now. sorry, we're in June. Yeah, yes, June I'm, I'm jumped ahead. Yeah, <laughs> we're light speed here. <laughs> I'm excited. I, 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 actually, we go to back to May. Um, do, you, do you want sure, to sure. read out? Shall I read? Because you had Mark Newbold on on the show. Yes. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Shall, I, shall I read? Do you want me to read out what his embarrassing moment? Yes, yes please. please, please do. <laughs> Let's embarrass him a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy, uh, these, Mark. Yeah, all these people are going to be unfriending me after the minute <laughs> goes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I, uh, I asked him uh, what his embarrassing moment of his life was, and he, he said uh, he uh, was sending a question to Empire Magazine, uh, drunk for you and McGregor, and, and seeing it, <laughs> <laughs> and seeing it. Seeing it replied in print wasn't a highlight, especially as the question made zero sense. <laughs> and uh, he called me an ass was his words. <laughs> are you kidding? No, oh, boy. No, no, oh those, are his, those are his words. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. That is hilarious. And he, he probably took it with a grain of salt, too. And I'm sure. Talk, I'm about, sure. It, talk about another fun personality. Yeah, it, has, yeah. I don't think there's been a, a single person we've interviewed from from uh, across the pond that hasn't been a wonderful person. So, you know, you, Rob, you're certainly a, a big person waving the flag for that too. So, <laughs> It's not the end of the show yet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. I, I have faith. I have faith. So, Corey, I think we're on June. Yeah, we're, right? we, we, yeah we're down to June now, yes. Uh, and uh, we had a couple more shows there. Um, we uh, at a show at 20, we, we talked rumors with uh, the last part of uh, Full of Sith, Bobby Roberts, who has, has excellent... Uh, uh, describing skills. He is is quite a yes. quite a guy for for that knack for that. <laughs> he, is, he is a wordsmith. <laughs> he is a gift for the for the for the for the comparison. And uh, we uh, did a clip, couple of Clone Wars as we finish up the uh, season. Our very first one with, um, with Eric Geller from Oh, I'm, Force Cast. Force Cast. I'm sorry, I, I'm having a the mind mix here. That's all right. But um, yeah, He's he was great to talk heavy. to you. <laughs> yeah, I need to slow it down here. Um, but yeah, Eric was great, uh, a great guest to have, and what a great uh, little show for us to start up. A couple of Clone Wars, you came up with that title, Dan, uh, for that, oh, yeah. and um, it was fun to go through those to, to get a kind of a different perspective as far as you know the new season that was released on Netflix to be able to binge watch that and kind of take those one at a time. Um, show twenty twenty one, we walked, we talked to uh, I know one of another person off our list was Ricky Briganti uh, yeah. from Inside the Magic. And I know right around that time, my wife and I were, were you know, getting the plans together for making our own trip to Disney. And he was great to have on and get some tips and, uh, you know, talk about Disney and the parks. Because, uh, uh, you know, as, as this, the year goes on, we do get into some theme park news and some announcements there. So it was great to have him, too. We also saw the return of Aaron Harris. And mm-hmm. this is when we also found out that Harrison Ford was injured and. And man, did that cause a lot of shockwaves throughout throughout the oh, internet, yeah, that, didn't it? <laughs> it was scary too, wasn't it, Rob? Cock, yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. How? I'm, I'm not being funny, but how did that happen? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I one of his most embarrassing moments, I maybe. Possibly. Yeah, but that just goes to show the shoddy British workmanship, though. <laughs> 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 she said, "Probably said she would get us out of here." And then, you know, yeah, yeah that was that was uh, there was a little bit of uh, concern there of how it was going to affect filming, but clearly it, it seemed to be okay. And thank goodness for that. Show twenty one was very special for me because uh, the some of the earliest podcasts I ever listened to were uh, the Indie Cast and Inside the Magic. And Ricky Briganti has always been sort of a podcasting hero to me. So just being able to talk with him and just like. Just like you know, like you said, Corey, like we t- we get to talk to people, we're very blessed to do so, mm-hmm. and they just treat you like they've known you forever, and that was that was great. That was so exciting. And Eric, Eric, and Bobby the same way. It was it was just so such a thrill. We had a we had a good time in June. It's you know summers kicking into high gear and all kinds of stuff going on, and so it was cool. And, and that that jumps us right in. Do you have any embarrassing things for any of them? <laughs> uh, well, well, I did actually look at. Um, I'm actually on the page for Eric Geller now, but uh, oh, I uh, didn't see his. <laughs> he was one of the first we did, um, I'm but um, I'm, I'm just reading it now. I, I'm going to get so slated for this. Aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, oh, he, he's just gone on about uh, one of. The, uh, he was in a Sherlock Holmes spoof when he was a kid, <laughs> uh, cool. and he played the lead role of uh, Shark Log Hog. <laughs> uh, and midway through a monologue, he abruptly forgot the rest of his lines. Uh, uh, so, uh, mm, yeah, 
He was fast on his feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think he's recovered. He's done well. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's done pretty well for himself. He's he had a he had a great year for himself. I know. Uh, and then we get to July. We're halfway through the year. Uh, we had Dak. Corey, we had Dak. Yes. That was um, yes. the first John member Morton, of yeah. the original trilogy. We got to speak with John Morton and talk about uh, the phrase a gentleman and a scholar. It never yeah. was it more true than, uh, than being applied to him. And Jeff McGee famously said he wished that Dak or John would adapt, adopt him. <laughs> Yes, he was so fun. And then we had a uh, we had another couple of Clone Wars. We got to talk to Tasia Valenza, which was was wonderful. She was uh, just a, a very classy person and voice of Shock T on the Clone Wars. And we had a wonderful time with her. She was just she was just really really fun. She's one of those people that stands out to me as just having a great sense of humor and not taking life too seriously, but but taking very much what she does seriously mm-hmm. and professionally. Yes. And that was great. We also had a first. We had James Howell, one of our bloggers, a longtime friend from Geeks Helping Geeks. He interviewed Mark Dotson. Uh, that was a thrill. Mark is the the voice of some of the Gremlins and Salacious Crumb. Mm-hmm. And that was the first show, uh, I guess second show, Winding Down with Wings being the first, where we released it. And you and I weren't even on it. We just got to sit back and just enjoy it. Yeah. You know, because we're big fans too. And so getting, getting to hear James, who did, did a wonderful job. Uh, uh, very, very good. Mark was very, uh, very awesome, very gregarious and personable. And then we got we had another couple of Clone Wars with uh with our contest winner Gar Van Orden and he was amazing, wasn't he? Yeah, he had a lot of fun. Yeah. He's a theater teacher and mm-hmm. uh our contest was if you uh did a review on iTunes, which you know, by the way, feel free to pause the show and, and do a review right now for us. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for yeah. we appreciate it. Um he um he was amazing. I mean, it's just like talking about the stars aligning. He was awesome with his analysis. And then we wrapped up July with a book chat with Jeffrey Brown, who's, of course, um, the incredibly talented artist and illustrator for Good Night Darth Vader and Vader's Little Princess and Vader and Son. And who knew he was uh, lived so close to where we are? But that was uh, that was quite a thrill, too. I, I'm just looking at um, John Morton's IMDb page. Oh, obviously, you played Dak, right? I yes. Guess. Uh, I didn't know he had a part in Superman 2. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't actually know that. I can't even remember now. I remember him talking on Full of Sith, which is how we even found out that he was even doing podcasts. And he right. mentioned that, and I thought, whoa, that's, yeah, that's he, pretty serious. Yeah, he played Nate, who was on the, on the moon at the, at the uh, beginning of the movie, who actually sees you know, oh, the, ba- the, oh, the bad guys man. going past. Yeah. We'll have to have him back on. Uh, I, you know, and he report. Yeah, he reports back and says, I think I just saw a girl. You know, that, that's, <laughs> that's a good line, yeah. Yeah, I, did, I didn't know that. <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just taking you completely off topic. No, no, no it relates no, perfectly. <laughs> it's it's, a, it's part, part of the fun of coffee, Chad. You just kind of go all over the place with it because there's a, there's a lot of fun that can be. We could easily spend three hours doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Corey's going to introduce August, but I just want to point out real quickly, Corey, seven shows in August – yeah. Wow. Yeah, That's I was lot. I'm looking at the, the how, how do we list. not lose <laughs> our minds? I have no idea. Probably because we took a little bit of a break you know in September. So, yes, yes, I think so. <laughs> uh, I, I think the key there is we. I mean, Corey and I, when we tape, we try to put as tape as many shows as we can in one night and just sort of try to distribute them that way. That seems to work out pretty well. Mm-hmm. Was it was it was it raining a lot over there in August? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> bored, yeah. Not, not really. Not really. Not like California had last month. <laughs> yeah, getting to yeah. August, uh, we got to talk, you know, to, to Troy Meldzler, uh, and he did uh, send you a Comic Con for us, and kind of his experience. He's he's almost been. I think he had mentioned almost every year he'd missed only one year um, yeah. for San Diego Comic Con, um, and he had a great time there and had some some stuff for us there. Um. We talked to Ian Desher, which uh, we talked to him previously about some of his other books. He did the uh, the um, William Shakespeare Star Wars novels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked to uh, him about the, the Jedi Doth Returns, which they had a really What's nice. Is going to happen with that? The, uh, yeah, yeah. This year too. I was going to say they really did a nice uh, little uh, kind of a you know what do you call it? Uh, three books uh, bundled together for. Um, Mike from the uh, Full of Sith had gotten after Christmas, um, and he had, had kind of announced that uh, this year. But um, Ian was a great guest to have on, and he's been on in your classroom a couple of times, I think. As yeah, well, Dan. oh yeah, so that's a lot of fun to have him. 
Uh, going down the list, uh, we had a couple of Clone Wars with uh, Laird Malmud and Chris Hamilton from uh, the indie cast. Those guys were great uh, talking yeah. those episodes. Great show. The, the, those, I mean, and so, Star Wars and, and, and uh, Star Wars Kids cast too it was Chris. Yeah, with with Chris. That's right. That's right. Uh, I think it's so great that they can kind of shift their fandom to whatever what the topic may be, and just go in the, in the depth and just enjoy it. So it was a lot of fun to talk to those guys. Uh, show number twenty three, we talked to Adam Bray, uh, who wrote the Rebel, Rebels Visual Guide. Which, he was a lot of fun to talk about that. Um, we got some more information about the. I'm sorry, talking about celebration. We uh, had our Coffee with Kumbi T-shirts. Uh, yeah, that debuted. And uh, this month, and, and we're looking to get those out. I still wear mine all the time. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> I, I got one. There you go. One of the, fir- I, one of the first ones. That's that, right. yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. you talking about that. And and Rob, you, you on that episode, you uh, interviewed Corey D. Williams. You want to talk a little about that? Oh, Corey D. Williams. I mean, he is every bit as cool as his father. <laughs> uh, Which is saying uh, something. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the, the guy was just so nice. He was just so cool. Um, yeah, it was again shaking. It was just an honor to interview someone like Corey D. Williams. Um, he's he's a fitness fanatic. Um, I I I think it was the third day at London, and um, I had stuffed myself silly with uh, <laughs> fish and chips, McDonald's. So when he <laughs> so when he started talking about fitness, uh, uh, oh uh, I, I, I I started breathing in. <laughs> um, but you know the the guy I, I asked him um, about his uh, experience on set and uh, you know I, I I wanted to to find out a bit about what Richard Marquand was like working with George Lucas and um, he was it was quite funny because he said that um, <clears throat> George Lucas when they were on set doing the sail badge scene that um, over the days that they were shooting that George Lucas wore the same shirt. <laughs> that's hilarious so, <laughs> probably didn't get the same paycheck though oh probably prob- <laughs> prob- uh, probably not no but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah what a great guy great, great guy and very, as I say very cool he did a couple of impressions of his father as, uh, as Lando as well I felt quite honored to oh, be, wow. to listen into that yeah yeah <laughs> that was very cool <laughs> pretty pretty slick that yeah that was um, an, a great conversation that was, it was just a great month August was a great month mm-hmm. and you know, we you know as you said, we got to meet, find out more about the Inquisitor and Agent Callus. Consetta yep. comes back. Um, just just a lot of fun things. We got to talk with Brian, and it, it's neat. Um, usually, whenever we have someone on for the first time, we ask them their five questions, which you know, of course, we're going to be doing that with Rob here very soon, which is exciting. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> These are sweating. But, yeah, that's right. But then um, we. Um, we had, we we forgot to mention this before, but then we we shifted into I mentioned the top show. We did so many shows in 2014, um, and I was starting to notice we were. I feel like we were putting out a lot of content, um, but then like people would look at us and they'd say, "Oh, they're show number 24. They've been around for how long? Do they ever put out shows?" Of course we do. So we started putting in parentheses at the end of the title of each show how many we put out to that point. So it gave us a little more. Um, more of an idea of of what we're covering and and the kind of work we're putting into it because I think that that shows you know hey you know feel free to mm-hmm. invest in us because we're going to be putting out some information hopefully it's something that you will enjoy and want to listen to so uh, August certainly went a long way towards me having to count on my fingers and toes how many we put out <laughs> yeah I also like to mention that we had John Jackson Miller on and um, yeah. it was the first book of the the new. Well, it was Star Wars: A New Dawn. It had featured Kanan and uh, Hera as, far, as mm-hmm. the characters, and that was kind of the the, the first release as far as the new con- canonical, um, uh, well, materials that are coming yeah. out as far as comics and whatnot. So that was kind of the first shot in the dark there for for our fans to kind of get gear up for the new con- canonical. Uh, information we're getting, and then uh, we had you know for show twenty four you mentioned we had. Um, Jordan Mason on uh, talking Darth Maul, mm-hmm. and uh, he was great to have on too. He was very insightful. He's he's contributed a few blogs to StarWars dot com, and he talked about Darth Maul, who's of course a, a huge fan favorite for so many of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was I do want to say real quickly having John Jackson Miller on again was cool because he was the very first guest we ever yes. interviewed. Yeah. So and uh, he's really funny, uh, really smart. We'll talk about a collection of comic books yes. too. His his yes. stories about. 
um, getting that separate home and, and just basically it's full of comics. That's, that's <laughs> my wife and she, I think she still has her eyes in a certain direction. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> has it, Rob, your, your wife, is she, um, into a, a lot of the, the fun things we're into as well? She's not into Star Wars or, uh, Star Trek or anything with star in it really. Um, <laughs> but, um, she, she does class herself as a geek, um, you know, and she admires my collection and uh, she contributes to the collection quite a bit. So that's good. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite lucky in that, in that sense. <laughs> uh, and she, are you guys, you're big into Doctor Who, aren't you both? Yeah, we both love Doctor Who. I mean, it's only, it's filmed just down the road from us. Um, oh, yeah, cool. You know, yeah, it's about 10 miles down the road, the Doctor Who studios. Uh, so yeah, it's filmed, and they they do film around our area quite a bit. Um, I'm I'm on the books for the extras as well, so I'm hoping I get a call at oh, some great. point. <laughs> well, that's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, that that would be pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that's right. Uh, cool. But yeah, yeah, we love Doctor Who. She loves Torchwood and uh, Walking Dead and uh, Falling Skies, which you know is executive produced by Spielberg. She lo- she loves anything like that. But I just can't get her into Star Wars. Isn't uh, that wild? Yeah, I, I need some tips on how we what well, we can do here. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> we need we need those tips. Well. Yeah, yeah. Let's know if anything works out. Yeah. yeah, if you do, we'll write a book about it. <laughs> um, we uh, true confessions. Uh, I have never seen a single second of Doctor Who. Have you not? I never really? have. It's not that I don't think it sounds cool, especially the, the David Tennant stuff. I just I just never have. Yeah, Corey, have well, you? You know, I gave it a shot. I think. Oh, it was about a year ago or so. I thought, I'm going to sit down and see what all this is all about. So I was on Netflix and, and sat down and started watching. And it's just so bizarre to me. And I was like, well, why, <laughs> what in the world is going on here? <laughs> and, I, I, uh, will grant, I will grant that. It's a very bizarre show. <laughs> but, but so are we. So you think Yeah, I think natural. it'd be right in there. But I don't, I don't know. Didn't, didn't catch yeah. on for me too much. Maybe I'll give it another shot. In 2015. Yeah, you should you should do that. Just, you know, just don't watch the Christmas specials, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, just, so Christmas they're, specials they're, don't they're, seem to work out, are, do they? Oh, they're so they're so far out there. Right? They're in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. Oh, far, <laughs> even farther away, even farther than the Star Wars Christmas special, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Wow. Well, maybe not. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, yeah, we're talking about getting off the rails. I did finally watch all three seasons of Sherlock, and. Oh my gosh, that might be You're one welcome. of the best TV shows. I, yes, that might be one of the best TV shows I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I, I, well, Sherlock is just filmed, again, just down the road from us because it's by BBC Wales. Wow. And um, it pains me to say that, um, that I'm on, as I say, I'm on the books for the extras. And I had a text message a few months back uh, to do uh, a wedding scene for Sherlock. And um, Whoa. I couldn't do it. Oh, I had another, oh man. I, I had other arrangements, and um, I, I was oh man, and the wedding scene was in um, I think season three. With, yeah, with second uh, uh, second yeah. show I think. Yeah, where Benedict Cumberbatch is going around, you know, and oh. analyzing, and um, oh man, I it look at that now. Me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't help but watch that episode. And think oh no, we my you know my head in my hands. So uh, mm-hmm. I think yeah. you were, you must have been at the table that had a place card where Noel was sitting. Is that oh. you? Yeah, yeah. We'll just pretend. We'll just pretend like that was where you were going to sit. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but well, we, uh, fantastic show. Oh, a- absolutely. So, so September, as Corey said, we took um, we took some time off. Probably should have taken more. That's the first month I go back to school, and that's always uh, quite a month. Um, but we only had two shows that month. But th- what shows they were? We we finished off our cup of Clone Wars as far as looking at season six with Jason Ward of uh, Making Star Wars dot net. Uh, we talked about the Yoda arc, which Rob talked about so eloquently before and very powerful very fun jason was a great guest to no one's surprise and then uh we had an amazing book chat with with chris hamilton of how star wars conquer the universe yes and i finally just finished that book last week and oh my goodness i'm gonna try to get a, a full review here coming up fairly soon but it was uh it's must read for star wars fans there are people who are just fans of culture in general it, phenomenal that was a great conversation I'll have to check that out. I'm, I, that it's, that's going on my wish list. Wish yes. list. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely on my list for 2015 to, to pick up and check out. So uh, 
And we yeah. highly recommend that when you, when you do decide to purchase it, everyone, uh, go through our affiliate link on on our Coffee with Kenobi, and um, that would not hurt our feelings in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make. I promise, I will. There you awesome. go. <laughs> we definitely had a big another big month in October. Uh, getting back into the swing of things. Six shows. Six uh, shows and huge shows. Rebels, Re- Rebels Reactions show was premiered there. Um, they had the, the premiere, uh, as Dan and I talked about, we, we got together for that one. Um, mm-hmm. For, for uh, Spark of Rebellion. Spark of Rebellion. And um, yeah, that show kind of just took off. I mean, like, it it just flew by. I, I'm surprised it's just pick, pick it up now again. But we had Craig Dixon on um, as, as far as far Who's as our, Who does Rebels Reconnaissance for us, reviews all those shows. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. If you guys are interested in, in checking out uh, the show, uh, hop on our website and check out the blog that he writes. Basically, he drops it in. Right when the show ends, um, that 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 night or that next day, uh, so check those out. Uh, we had Jean Marie Marcus from uh, the Wookie Gunner on, and and uh, she was great guest to have on. And we uh, had um, Matt Moore as well. Uh, he talked about droids with us. Um, he was he was a lot of fun to have on as well. Uh, just, oh yeah, he and who's who's been a phenomenal um, scribe. Mm-hmm. We we call him our comic scribe because yes. he's he's got the inside track on on all things Marvel and Star Wars and. Man, what what a what a writer he is! Yeah, he was he was great. And as as far as going on to Rebel Directions, we uh, had Trisel Delgado on um, for for one of our episodes as well to chat with her, and she was great uh, inside into her her fandom and how she's getting along with Rebels Reactions. And uh, Dan, we had Freddie Prince Jr. on uh, along with wow. Mike Pilot, which wow, oh my gosh! He, I mean, again, it's you know you just talk to these 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 actors and in, in these, these folks who make Star Wars for a living. I mean, and it's their job and it's, you think that, you know, your, 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 your hands are shaking, you're getting sweaty and, and, and you just don't think it's going to go very well, but they're so down to earth and so, mm-hmm. um, you know, enjoyable to talk to as far as, you know, talking their fandom for Star Wars and they're just jazz, as jazzed up as you are. And it puts you kind of in, in you know, a good place where you can feel like, oh, they're just Star Wars fans just like us. And Freddie was definitely, uh, you know, a symbol of that. And I really enjoyed talking to him. I'm curious. I mean, you get someone like Freddie Prince Jr. on your show. Uh, how much notice do you get? That's, uh, that's a good question. Uh, basically, <laughs> um, Twitter is a wonderful thing. Yes, and, yes. you know, we just, we just reach out to people and um, and you know through and through different channels too through emails and things like that, and it's pretty much up to them. Like there are some people you reach out to, and you may not hear back from them for months, whereas some yeah. people will respond within ten seconds. Mm-hmm, so you, yeah. you just really never know. And of course, when it's someone like Freddie Prince Jr., who's a huge star in his own right, even before Star Wars, yeah, sure. um, you just say Corey and I just say, you know what, we'll uh, we'll clear time to anything we can do to get him on, and he was. Phenomenal. Yes. Um, he's. It seems like someone we went to high school or college with. He was just right. like a really laid back, down earth guy. And I, I think anyone who listened to that show felt like, oh my gosh, he's one of us. It was just. It was one of the coolest yeah, interviews well. we've ever done. So, so we, you know, he says yes, and then you're like, um, wow, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. exactly how it goes. Yes. <laughs> and then you jump on your computer and try to come up with some good questions and and hope that it simulates some great conversation and it exceeded our expectations. It was a good show. Oh, thank you. Uh, speaking of shows, we had uh, show twenty five. Uh, Catherine Table, another huge uh, Star Wars celebrity. I think she was on our our big list as well uh, for uh, for Coffee with Kenobi. Uh, as far as having you know those guests we want to have on is uh, uh, you know top of our list. She was up there. We also had fan a uh, fan favorite on uh, Ryder Waldron, uh, who blogs for us as well. Yeah, um, and Cantina Cast too, and Cantina Cast exactly, and and he he talked about Salt Lake Comic Con, and uh, we talked about um, another big thing in the Coffee Kenobi Kino- world. Um, we announced the Legends Library, yeah, and had, and put on the uh, first uh, episode for them from them uh, interviewing Mark Thompson. Leg- Legends Library is um, it's again where when we started the show. If you would have told me years ago that mm-hmm. um, we were going to have. Uh, people who we've never met before who actually wanted to contribute to our show, I'd have been like, wow, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, mm-hmm. how lucky would we be? And here we are talking to Rob, who does, you know, the espresso shots for us. And then, and then, uh, Randy, who'd been sending us clips of stuff. He does some great voice work in his own right. 
and just had some, always has great ideas for us. And then he said, Hey, I, I really want to do a podcast with you guys. And, and we jumped at that because it was great. And, uh, whenever Roku Depot does their reviews of podcasts, they're always very complimentary of Legends Library. And if you're looking into the expanded universe or Legends, um, and you want to sort of figure out what books would be interesting or what they're talking about, the angles, uh, Randy and Luke do a tremendous job. We're very, uh, fortunate to be able to have them on because they're awesome. I think next year for our end of the year, we probably need to have them on uh, with Rob as well. I think that'd be pretty yeah, fun. that'd be cool. <laughs> that, that that sounds great. <laughs> that sounds really good. What else do we have? We uh, we also had we also had our. Did you talk about Teresa being on? Yes. Yep. Yeah, that and that was fun too. I and mean, this is another person that um. All these people that we've admired their work. Again, it's, it's, we just can't stress enough where Corey and I are just a couple of goofballs, <laughs> you know, and we, we're just fans and, and we're just like, what? What? These people want to speak with us? It was, it was really fun. It was really fun. Uh, we go to November. We're almost done with the year. Uh, another huge, huge month. It, it's hard to believe that 2015 could top this um, uh, year for Star yeah. Wars. But I mean, what do we have? We had James Lucino, who was an amazing guy. You know, wrote Tarkin, which is a tremendous book. One of my one of my all time favorite pieces of fiction in general. Wow! And and that was great. Uh, Rob, did you get a chance to read Tarkin yet? I haven't. No. Um, I, I, again, uh, I'll be honest. Um, not the biggest expanded universe fan, mm-hmm. um, but I have made it one of my New Year's resolutions to read some more Star Wars books. Sure, uh, and, and it may and help too. Novels. Sure, yeah. it, it may help to know that this is it all counts, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, you, you get these insights. And um, speaking of insights, we got to have Joe Taylor on another, like Troy Metzler, um, a, a longtime friend of ours from Geeks Helping Geeks, and then he um, he discussed breaking ranks with us for Rebels reactions. That was fun. We had Adam Watson of Stars in the Classroom for Out of Darkness, and that was phenomenal. And then and then we ended Rebels reactions. We're gathering forces with Justin Bolger from the the Force Cats, and mm-hmm. all these guests, you know, brought these amazing insights. Rebels Reactions is a fun show because it's it's very different from our regular show, but we get to sit down and really break down and analyze um, what's going on here uh, with Rebels, and I think that's fun. It's just it just neat to break these things down. It's kind of one of the things one of our other little visions for the show is to just. You know, look at examine Star Wars through a critical lens. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. We, so if I, I, I can ask you a question on Star Wars Rebels. If you can sum it up really quickly, what are, you, sure. what are your thoughts? What are, you, what are your thoughts at this early stage for Star Wars Rebels? Mm, Corey, go ahead. Oh, well, easily said. Um, you know, we were just breaking down the last year, and, and I made a little top five list for myself just to to mention maybe here at the end. And, and uh, Rebels, I'll, I'll preview it a little little. Early, I mean, it's number two on my list. Oh, really? Uh, from last year, I, I just really gotten into it, and not only that, but my kids have also gotten into it. Uh, I think it's a phenomenal series. Uh, it's it's got such talent and such great storytelling uh, in it. it, and it's just such this this air we've never seen before. So it's brand new groundwork uh, being laid as far as you know that the era that we all kind of grew up with. That, that's the that that's that, that same era as far as you know getting into a new hope. You know that's that's all we grew up with, and they're doing a great job of, of expressing that, and especially in, in younger fans and and us as older fans, and and it just bridges a really nice gap. So I think in itself, I'm really excited for the uh, the series to start back up and get back into it. Yeah, I I would echo that. It's um, another element of full disclosure. Corey made a top five of the year and forgot to tell me, so I didn't make a top five. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I can I can think on my feet. Yeah, well. think on your feet. I, I think I'll come up with something, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's great. It's terrific. It it sets more of uh, the canvas of Star Wars, and there's just so much to it that adds to the mythology. And mm. it's just there's like a it's a, it's cozy. I know that sounds weird, but it's huh. just like it's like uh, the good feelings you have from the original trilogy. Yeah, um, and it's not intimidating. Like Clone Wars can be intimidating. There are so many planets, yes, that's a good and point. species, and and characters who right now, like if I saw a picture of them, I'd say, oh yeah, they're in Clone Wars. But I couldn't tell you like what season or what episode. And mm-hmm. and because it's there's a lot, there's a lot to disseminate. And Rebels is just very welcoming. I think it's done a lot for Star Wars and fandom 
Uh, I don't think it's done as much for stormtroopers. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's been <laughs> like with you. Spoons, no, but, yeah. It's whereas good. Clone Wars made me like Battle Droids more. It is it has not necessarily increased my love of stormtroopers, which is already really high. But I I love Rebels. I think it's great. And um, Rob, what about you? Well, um, as you know, I'm I'm a huge retro fan, and I, I get a retro vibe from Star Wars Rebels. Um, I love the uh, Ralph McQuarrie feel about the whole show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, as a kid, I had all these Ralph McQuarrie paintings on my wall. In between. Gold bikini layer, of course. <laughs> that, that's a different story. Sure. <laughs> but, but it has, um, yeah, it has this very nice, and as you say, a cozy retro feel to the whole show. And, uh, you know, you've got, you got Frank Oz returning, James Earl Jones, who's done a, a bonus scene. And, yeah, to me, it just feels like, classic Star Wars. And that's not taking anything away from the prequels or the Clone Wars. No. I love the shows. I love the prequels. But you look back at the Clone Wars in the first season, um, the first couple of episodes, and they were good. Don't get me wrong. But compare it to the first couple of episodes of Rebels. And for me, personally, it's on a whole different level. I agree. It's, and honestly, to be fair, it's not even close. And, I, and Clone Wars is, is not meant probably to be, my favorite. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's not. I mean, Cl- Clone Wars, to me, my two favorite animated shows of all time are the Batman animated series and Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that once Rebels is done, it will be in the top three. But they're wonderful. I do want to um, pull an audible here. We got one email um, about our reviews of Rebels I'd like to share with everyone and mm-hmm. kind of get everyone's opinion on. Uh, it's from BP Draper, and he wrote, Hi, Dan and Corey. I wanted to let you know that I've been listening to your podcast since you made a guest appearance on Full of Sith. I've since gone back and listened to all your past episodes. I've enjoyed your efforts to explore the lesser appreciated parts of the saga and figure out why they work. My concern is that you do not seem to be doing the same with your Rebels Reactions episodes. You seem so focused on taking a critical look at the show that you're missing out on how awesome it is. I do not listen to your podcast to find out what doesn't work in Rebels. I can think of those things on my own. What I want to do when I listen to your show is to geek out with you about the awesomeness, what we all love, Star Wars. I'm not one of those people that believes that my love of Star Wars endows me with the right to tear it down. After all, I love my wife, but that doesn't justify me pointing out all her flaws. So please, please, please focus on why the lesser appreciated parts of the show should be loved, too. I look forward to listening to more positive episodes when Repels returns in January. Thanks, BP Draper, who's the author of the Complete Bubbly Anthology. He does provide a link which we'll put in the show notes. And he puts a PS. My youngest daughter understands that Hera is awesome and a boss, and she is only three years old. So stop <laughs> complaining that she doesn't fit your idea of what she should be. Every fangirl I know that has seen the show recognizes that Hera is awesome. So um, I like this. And I think yeah. it's probably yeah. primarily uh, focused on some of my comments because I got to admit, when I, when I do a Rebels Reactions, I kind of put on my, uh, my teacher slash uh, mm-hmm. burgeoning professor hat. And I start for <laughs> <laughs> that was for Craig. Um, yeah, and I, I look at it and I and I I find myself being more critical. And Corey and I have had a lot of uh, intense discussions about this, uh, all all from a good place of love. Mm-hmm. And and for me, I like being critical. Oh, and, yeah. I, and it's not yeah. it's not being critical in a negative way. It's it's how I analyze and break it down. And I, I peel apart all the layers. And you know, my wife is fond of saying, Dan, sometimes the curtains are just yellow. Not for me, they aren't. <laughs> Not for me, they aren't. So that's one of the things that I love to do, and, and I do it from a place of love. But I certainly can um, empathize with what BP Draper is saying. I like his comparison of, you know, I love my wife, but I don't point out all her flaws. And that's, that's wise. And I certainly don't wish to alienate anyone with, with those thoughts. It's just um, one of the things that I enjoy doing. But I agree. As far as the Hera thing goes, I think my issue with Hera has always been I want a Hera centered episode. That's what I want. And I'm always going to want that. And so once I get that, I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to put that part to rest. But um, I love Rebels. I, I think it's tremendous. And BP, I, I applaud you for your comments, and, and I, I welcome them. What about you guys? Well, <clears throat> I think if you sit down and you, you have a chat with friends on a show that you both like, and you're critical, and you, and you start you know, getting into the nitty-gritty, and you get, you get really critical, 
isn't that sometimes a, a sign that you love the show? I, I think uh, so. It is for I me. Mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've done this with, with my friends. You know, my, one of my favorite films is Jaws. But we, oh, yeah. we have, you know, we've actually sat down and done our own audio director's commentary. Ooh. And, uh, you know, we, we've been critical of the film, even, even though I think it's probably one of the most perfect films ever made. Agreed. You know, we, we'll still sit down and go, yeah, you know, that could have been, you know, could have been done better. I'm sure we couldn't have done it better, but you know what I mean. <laughs> sure. For sure. Yeah. This, this is up after a couple of beers, guys, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know we, we still love the film. I, we st- I still I love Rebels. Um, someone asked me the question the other day, what did, you, you know, what, what, what did you think of Rebels? What did you think of the first episode of Rebels? And I said, well, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was just fantastic. You've got these three-dimensional characters in the very first episode, which is so hard to do. However, if I had to pull, if I had to pick one thing about Rebels was the look of the Wookiees in the very first episode. They, mm-hmm. they looked like a they looked like a ninety a nineteen nineties video game cutscene. <laughs> yes, uh, you know. <laughs> but that's not to say that I didn't. I love the show, and I've watched it multiple times. And I, I think sometimes criticizing something in depth and being passionate about it is it's just showing your your love for the show. Yeah, I, you know, my, as far as my thoughts go, I mean. First, I want to thank BP for for writing this in because, mm-hmm, for sure. you know, and being honest too, because anything we can do to, you know, just make our improve. show better, improve yeah. ourselves, exactly, yeah. and 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 honestly, you're everyone's welcome to write in their thoughts, what we do you think, and, and and post reviews. I love reading those kind of things, and and you know, it, I think it comes down to um, fandom uh, as far as. When we talk about things, you talk about Jaws or talk about any any movie you love, you're going to break it down and go, ah, oh, that part was okay or that part. I mean, it, it, all in all, you're still going to love it by the end of the day. You're still going to say, that was my favorite movie ever. My favorite movie ever is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm, is there parts too. I don't like? There are. Uh, do I fast really? forward? Well, I mean, there are. I mean, in a sense, it's not going to be a complete, perfect movie at frame every frame. I mean, there can be parts where you're going to say, well, that part really didn't line up right, but it works. You know, it's it's just because that's movie, that's film. It's it's a medium where, um, you know, it, it's just you, you're not gonna get it perfectly every every time. And 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 but us, us yeah. as fans, like I'm gonna go back and say, just us as fans, we we tend to be so critical because we love it so much. You you put it just yeah. right, Rob. I mean, we love it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and 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 yes, we wouldn't want to break down um, our wives or or or, or whoever. Uh, Partners and our co-hosts, our co-hosts, <laughs> but but we, <laughs> yeah. but you know, of course, we do out of love. I mean, we we love each other, and we, I think that if something was to come up and be critical of, it, it'd be out of love. You know, say, listen, you know, I don't like that shirt on you, Dan, because it makes your eyes look <laughs> bad. Be, I don't know. That would be weird. <laughs> It'd be weird, I don't but like that. I don't like that shit either. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's all about love, buddy. That's so, right. uh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we don't, we don't slice and dice. We, um, <laughs> we critique and we analyze, but yeah, I'm one thing we'll never be is sick of fans. We're not just going to like yeah. everything because that's just not realistic. And, right. and it's not, I don't think it's really genuine. I mean, I, there's going to be some things that's, that hit you the wrong way. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. there are certain things about your your kids that you're like, well, I wish they did that a little bit better. I wish they'd pick that off the floor. But, you know, it, like you guys said, it comes from a place of love. So I think we've talked about this enough. But um, very good thoughts. And um, eh, I, I love what evening. you guys said. Uh, before we move on to December, um, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shows mm-hmm. in November. Um <laughs> It's crazy. Um, we had uh, the second winding down with Williams, which meant so much to me in December. I, yes. December's a busy month for me because I have a, lot, a ton of grading to do for my composition classes. And uh, Rob, that was just the perfect uh, bomb to uh, to get through it. And, and not that I don't enjoy grading them, but sometimes you know that can be pretty intense. So it was very relaxing. Oh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I that that's the whole aim of the the show is to make it relaxing. You know, and it, it, to do exactly what it says on the tin. You know, at the end of the day, if you had, if you've had a hard day in work or school, uh, winding down with Williams is, is is to do that. It's just put your headphones on, relax, and listen to some uh, relaxing John Williams renditions. It, it was in the, it just just with the doctor ordered um, show twenty six. It's, it's it's always funny to me. It seems like our months with like. 
a ton of shows. We only have one regular show. In October, we only have one regular show. In November, we only have one regular show. But we, what a show it was. I and mean, we had James Sharon of Bomb Bad Radio. Um, he was hilarious. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was so much fun to talk to. We had a like, good conversation about the Jedi. And that was, that was wonderful. And then our, our last one uh, for the month was the Force Awakens teaser trailer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, my this be, wait, this made a trailer? <laughs> oh, I oh, you, no. you not heard about it. Uh, why haven't you told me about this? <laughs> oh, you, really well, I, you were probably busy watching the Fifty Shades of Grey trailer. I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, that was anti- my most anticipated movie of 2015. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. Uh-huh. It's not. It really isn't. Honest. Well, of course not. Of course not. That that was a very fun show because uh, that really was, uh, as we said on it. Um, it was our immediate reactions, and we didn't get a chance to read anything or look at anything or find out what other people were saying. We just sort of went from our gut. It was incredibly fun, and of course, our our we've even gone even further with it. But it was a fun show, and November was a, a really fun month. Yeah, Force Awakens teaser trailer. I mean, wow! <laughs> How many times did you go watch it so far since now? Uh, oh, I I've lost count. Yeah, I've lost count. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I know it's under 20, but it's over 10. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's 88 seconds of, 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 bliss. New, of bliss, of new Star Wars. Uh, I mean, just thinking about it now, I mean, when you see the X-Wing and the Vulcan, I got goosebumps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Have any of you I, seen it on the big screen? No. I'm, I went uh, to a movie uh, this past weekend and did... So it was not. wasn't on the trailer. It wasn't in the trailer. So what'd you see? I, I went and saw uh, Interstellar. Oh, how was it? Oh, it was excellent. It was, was it really, really really good? Really fantastic. I really, saw the new really Hobbit, well and I okay. it was my favorite of the three. Okay, and I, and I prefer, specifically went to a certain movie theater uh, farther away out than I normally would because I had heard from a student that they showed it and they didn't. Uh, oh no! Oh, I no. saw three previews for the Netflix Marco Polo TV show. <laughs> <laughs> One was enough. Yeah. Well, well, I've I've kind of seen it on the big screen because I've got a projector and so I, I can link it up to my laptop. So Ooh, um, that I, counts. I, I, I've I've kind of seen it on the big screen. That's cool. <laughs> Very good. Well, as we're talking, breaking down our, our year here, it's been a wonderful year. We're getting to last month here, December, uh, and it in itself was a, a an excellent month. We've got to talk to uh, Taylor Gray, um, the voice of uh, Ezra. And uh, he was great. He was such a great guy to have on. Uh, I got to talk to the guys from the Wolf Pack uh, and Show Twenty Seven, and and they were good as well. As far as you know, just being just a great great podcast and great guys, just great fans, and love what they do. And and I love talking to other podcasts because you get a sense of of camaraderie, camaraderie as far as you know you know you both put out a show that that deals with uh, either a certain topic or a certain piece of fandom. And uh, it's easy to to get along with folks uh, that kind of are in the same trenches as you are. So it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, we we saw Legend Library come out with uh, the next portion of 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 their of their show uh, with Dark Forces Rising, and um, Show Twenty Eight. We wrapped up uh, with Steve Sansweet talking all the stuff going on there. As far as uh, we brought, we talked about earlier the Force Awakens trailer. Um, got to talk about that with him, and of course our friends uh, at Star Wars in the Classroom. Um, another uh, long time coming. Yeah, I yeah. Interview. That's as well. They they talked about mm-hmm. uh, all the stuff going on with them and, and how to get involved there. And we talked about you know all the news that's been coming out as far as uh, second season of Rebels. Uh, some of the so the character names that popped up. Uh, Frank Oz re- returning to uh, Rebels react or um I'm sorry the Rebels animated TV show. And then we, of course we uh, we had uh, Tom Kane on uh for uh, a Clone Wars and he was excellent. A lot of fun to have on again. Every every guest we have on is just excellent and and, and top of their form, and, and we sh- can be more excited for uh, 2015. That was that, and I believe I think I yeah I really said Christmas night. That was one we always mm-hmm. wanted for like a, a holiday treat and yeah. what a treat it was. And for me, the biggest treat and maybe um, I don't know if I, I mean you know scrambling to put my top five together. It could be number one hearing Yoda say. Uh, the podcast you're looking for. This is that yeah, was that was a lot of cool. That was cool. I never would have dreamed in a million years we could have got a chance to hear that. So that was that was That's great. And what a great guy. Cool. Yeah, I tell you, um, you mentioned the um, 
they re- you know they revealed some of the characters for the Force Awakens. And yeah. the, the the way that they did that. I think that's one of my favorite um, of 2014. Same here. Uh, mm. You know, just again, the, the retro theme, <laughs> which I keep coming back to, but <laughs> to, to have the, um, you know, to do it in the style of um, Topps vintage trading cards uh, is, is what a masterful stroke that so was. So classy, too. Oh, it was, it was just fantastic. Because, you know, obviously with The Force Awakens, they want to bring in a new audience, but they, they've got to keep the old audience new. Uh, they've got to keep them happy as well. You know, so to do stuff like that with the, you know, the retro Tops trading cards, uh, it's very clever. And um, I, I just hope Tops to actually do bring out trading cards for Force Awakens like that. Oh, yes. With, 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 the, uh, with the dodgy bubble gum and the, you know, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that white powder was on the bubble gum. You know? <laughs> but, that, but, that would, but that would be fantastic, wouldn't it, if they did that? Um, oh, wouldn't it, though? You know, and, and on the back, you know, you have to make up, a, um, you know, a puzzle of, um, of a classic poster, of a Force Awakens poster. Oh, then, oh please take my money now. That would just yeah, be Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Exactly. From your mouth to Top's ears, that would be, that would be great. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so an, an amazing, amazing 2014, and, and I, um, I'm thinking 2015 is, is the year of Star Wars mm-hmm. uh, on our calendars for sure, and, and everyone else's calendars, no doubt about it. But what did we miss, guys? We kind of went over basically what we covered in our, on our, on our year at Coffee with Kenobi, but any particular stories that you'd like to – Kind of look at uh, before we uh, ask Rob his five questions. I tell you, I tell you what I like about 20, 2014 is um, this is kind of makes your job a lot more difficult. Is the mm-hmm. the <laughs> the lack of information on the film? Interesting. Tell us, tell us uh, about that. Well, I you know again, I I remember I'm old enough to remember 1976. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I was five five years old, obviously. But even with Empire and Return of the Jedi, I just remember going into these films with relatively, um, you know, not that much knowledge of the films. And I, I know that J.J. Abrams is trying to do the same thing. And, I, and you know, apart from having an eighty eight second teaser trailer and a few names being mentioned. We haven't had that much information on Force Awakens. No, and and I'll, I'll be honest, and uh, I, I I hope that carries on into 2015. Yeah, me too. Me too. Mm. It goes very much along the lines of our no spoiler policy, but mm. I I enjoy them slowly divvying out information and like the imagination is such a powerful thing, and it lets you go a lot of places yeah. that you couldn't normally go. So just that build up. Uh, this is finally we're going to see a new Star Wars film. It's January 1st as of the recording, but knowing that there's stuff out there, but there's not that much, there's just so much more to look forward to, so much more to enjoy, so much to anticipate. And that's a beautiful thing. I know there have been um, a lot of um, mixed emotions about it, Mm -hmm. but I I wouldn't change a thing. I I love how they're releasing the information. It's, it's, um, it's really added to the excitement for me. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, um, the other, the other thing I loved as well was just little throwaway lines on Twitter, like um, uh, the the official Star Wars dot com on Twitter when they said, um, "Yes, that's John Williams' new score in the trailer." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just a, just that throwaway things, line. Yeah. 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 Oh, by the way, uh, you might be interested in this. <laughs> yeah, I know you've had a lot of awesomeness, guys, but here's a little <laughs> bit more. You know. <laughs> You know, I just love the way that they're approaching this film and the way that uh, they're just getting the information out there. But I just, don't, I just hope we don't get too much. Uh, you know, it's inevitable that we're going to get a full trailer, uh, but I hope they don't give too much away in, in that. To be honest, and me too. Yeah, cool. uh, what about you? Yeah, one thing that we didn't talk about too much was the the new Star Wars dot com. I know Rob had some thoughts on that, uh, but you know, we, yeah. we were featured as far as the community. Page there, we, our podcast popped up as as yeah. We were the, we were on the first round. That was yeah, and awesome. That was I mean, I remember the day when you were t- we were taking the screenshots, mm-hmm. just like eighteen, nineteen, twenty different screenshots of just you know, <laughs> 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 look at this angle, look at this angle, look at it. No, but uh, it was it was ahead and watch it. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I know Dan, for you personally, uh, you're you're right for them as well. So I think that's a big huge thrill. 
uh, as far as 2014 and, and the website there. That was, that was, uh, it's still something that every day it, it just makes me smile. I, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. It's a tremendous amount of fun and kind of know a lot of great people through it. And it's, um, that I did a, a blog on Scrooge and Darth mm-hmm. Vader in a comparison. And that was, it was sure over 14,000 times. Wow. Wow. I can't get over that. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's got to be a glitch. <laughs> that, that doesn't it's seem me possible. just keep refreshing the page yeah, yeah thanks. I, was thanks say that, Corey. Yeah, sure. I, I was helping too <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that Rob yeah uh, a lot of fun a lot a lot of fun I, I've got to say on the on the Star Wars website um, I mean it was, it was crying out for change mm-hmm. um, but but the new design um, if anybody wanted to give an example of how a website should look mm-hmm. uh, especially for a big franchise uh, just just go and have a look at starwars.com um, then they're not paying me to say this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's just so clean. It's easy on the eye, you know, it caters for every kind of star Wars fan as well. But, um, yeah, as you say, um, the content is incredible, especially as you say, when you get certain coffee with Kenobi members writing for mm. star Wars, <laughs> you know, for the site as well. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, the, the new site is, is incredible. Um, very, very well done to the guys, whoever, you know, whoever did that. Very much, and thanks for your kind words about my blog too. I appreciate it. Is cheers? Is that appropriate to say cheers? Yeah, you can say cheers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say cheers. Yeah, cheers. I like that. Cheers. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, um, we also talked about you know the the change in the canonical look and rebels coming out at the end of Clone Wars. You know, actually getting to see a new season. Uh, it's been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a, a website that we love very very much that had a new look, and that's the Bearded Trio. Rob, tell us about that. Uh, I never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you'll really like it. Yeah, it's a good one. Check it out. I think you'll find yourself in it more than you realize. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Bearded Trio is um, yeah, it's a site which uh, I started about five years ago, um, purely, purely because I love John Williams, George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, and I, I just wanted to... I wanted to get that love out there onto the uh, onto the internet, uh, so I started that five years ago, and it's it's, it's grown. It's gone from strength to strength, and we've got a, a fabulous team behind us. Um, you know, we update on a daily basis, and as you say, we've just had a a complete redesign. I'm hoping it looks a bit fresher. It's great. Oh, thanks very much. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it really is. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and he didn't pay me to say that. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I mean, it's great. I would have given the money back because it's great. It's it's it looks wonderful. I mean, it's your your show is all your website has always been tops among fandom and, and distributing information and and just having a a very uh, sincere and honest approach. And um, you tell it you tell it how you see it, and um, you're a very positive, intelligent guy. So it's 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 one of my favorite websites to visit. What can I say? Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you very much. That that, that does actually mean a lot. Um, yeah, and it makes it all worthwhile. It really does. And we know how much time goes into that kind of thing too, and it's it's always updated, always fresh. Yeah, I mean, we we try to update on a daily basis. We keep our ears to the ground on any Spielberg, George Lucas, John Williams news, and of course, I mean, it is quite busy at the moment. There's a lot going on, um, but um, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it with with such a good team behind us. And um, I, I also want to thank you guys, Coffee with Kenobi, for. Uh, you know, for, for promoting the site and, you know, you're an extended family of the Bearded Trio and I really want to thank you guys. Oh, absolutely. The, the, yeah. uh, thank you for... The pleasure's uh, for, ours. Yeah. For, yeah, the pleasure's definitely ours. Thank you for being a, letting us be a part of it and being a part of Coffee with Kenobi because, I mean, your, we didn't talk about this, but your video blog on the top 10 Star Wars video games, not only was it picked up by StarWars.com, but it is the most viewed post we've ever had and that's because it was wow. amazing I, I really enjoyed making that i mean uh, as much as i'm not an expanded universe fan um i do i have played every star wars game over the years wow. uh which which is classed as expanded universe um yeah so yeah so I, I really enjoyed making that top 10 star wars video game video uh and to see it on starwars.com and and what a and thrill and the people, you know, the traffic was just incredible. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where I go from there, though. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you, you just, you know, you just keep on. That's what I was thinking. What's he going to do next? Yeah, me too. I yeah. 
<laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to need it. <laughs> I have a feeling the force will be very strong with you. It always has been. Oh, thank you very much, guys. You bet. So, um, 2015, um, let's talk about what we can look forward to from the Bearded Trio and from Cough with Kenobi in 2015. Rob, uh, what, what do you have coming up for us in the near future? <laughs> um, well, we obviously more of the same. We're going to be updating daily. The, the team has just increased as well. Um, but um, I've just booked tickets for London Film Comic Con where um, the Back to the Future, or most of the Back to the Future cast, mm-hmm. will be re- they'll be reuniting. So I'll be reporting from uh, London for that weekend. So that that's going to be that's going to be awesome. Um, you know, I'm I'm trying to get an interview with Christopher Lloyd. Oh, uh, that'd be awesome. You know, I'm trying my best, but uh, yeah, more of the same. Um, obviously, the, the the fresher looking website as well. Um, but of course, we, we've got things like um, Jurassic World, which is coming up. Looks as well. amazing. Yeah, it does. It looks good. You know, Colin mm-hmm. Trevorrow's take on, on the Jurassic Park universe. Um, that's going to be an interesting one. We've got the, the final season of Fallen Skies, which Spielberg is executive producer for. Um, and of course, you know, Star Wars. And, and of course, the, in January, we've got um, uh, George Lucas' Strange Magic, haven't we? Uh, Lucasfilm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, so a lot to report on in 2015. And Corey, what can we look forward to from us in 2015? You have oh, any surprises boy. for me? Um, we, um, well, well, gosh, we've got so many things going on as far as um, you know, interviews and guests. And I, I know we're looking at um, getting back on Rebels reactions as that starts back up. Um, of course, you know, we can't stop talking about celebration this year. Uh, we're only months away, and and Dan and I've kind of got everything kind of narrowed in and kind of getting the schedules together for each day and, and what we mm-hmm. want to do and looking forward to that. It's going to be a huge event. Um, we also, I, I don't know if you want me to announce it, but I will, we'll be in Indianapolis um, yeah. uh, very in soon March. in March. So just before uh, Celebration, we'll be in Indianapolis Comic Con, um, having a blast there and having a good time as far as kind of a, a precursor to Celebration. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be doing that. Um, of course, you know, Star Wars, all the information that comes out from anything Star Wars official that we'll be reporting on and getting getting our hands into and and uh, um yeah it's 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 gonna be a great year I'm looking forward to it because like you said it's this is kind of the year of Star Wars uh, I think it's gonna be a huge year for merchandising um, a lot of big big books are coming out we're hoping to get our hands on to as well um, you know it's have you started have you started Luke's book I have not I look I'm looking forward to start this month so it's pretty cool good good yeah the I'm new Luke Skywalker book is um it's worth it's worth the wait. I love the first person perspective. It's mm. it's uh so far so good. Good deal. Yeah. So uh and we have a our, we already recorded our first interview for two thousand fifteen and it it's um from Jordan White, Jordan mm-hmm. D. White, the editor of for Star Wars, the new Star Wars Marvel Comics, and that was a lot of fun. And yes. that, look for that very, very soon. In fact it may already be out by the time you hear this, but um if it's possibly even more excited about the Star Wars comics, the, this interview will do it for you because it, yeah. there's so much promise. Uh, that'll be good. Yeah, very good. And we're yeah. hoping to get more of the cast on from Clone Wars, and um, we just have a few left for the cast of Rebels. So we we hope to have them <laughs> yeah. on Rebels reactions. That would be nice. <laughs> yeah, look for some uh, returning guests um, and some fan favorites. Hope to get more of our bloggers on, and certainly Rob, we hope to have you on. Yes, again in the near future. Not not take so long to have you on again because this <laughs> has been uh, this has been wonderful. Well, uh, we, oh, the three you. of us together had had even better chemistry than I expected. Oh yeah, it's been. Uh, this is great fun. I want to do more. <laughs> Absolutely, well, I think we can arrange that. So uh, it's it's time, Corey. I, I think it's, yes, time, it's we, time we ask our our good friend here his the five Star Wars questions. <laughs> yes, Rob. Uh, the first question: What is your favorite Star Wars movie? Oh boy, um, favorite Star Wars movie. That's a really difficult one. It's like it's like asking me what my what my favorite chocolate is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I love I love A New Hope because it was the first movie. It was the first Star Wars I went to see when I was five or six years old, uh, and it literally changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I couldn't get enough of Star Wars from that moment on. And 
Uh, my brother took, it, took me to see it, and I was bugging him on the way home on a double-decker bus. You know, hum the John Williams, hum the theme tune, hum the theme tune. So, <laughs> so, so even at a young age, I was a John Williams fan. But I think, really, um, I'd have to say Return of the Jedi. Wow. Um, now, I know that Empire Strikes Back is technically the, the best one, but I, I was just at the right age for Return of the Jedi. You know, I was about... Um, I mean, 11 years old. So I was soaking up absolutely everything to do with Star Wars. You know, the, the kind of figures, uh, sticker albums, um, posters, books. Uh, and I just, I just remember, I have this vivid memory of sitting in the front row of the cinema with my friend. And back then, as a kid, sitting in the front row, you know, you get a bad neck, but it was just something special to sit in the front row watching a film. But um, I just remember watching Return of the Jedi and seeing the opening scene with the Imperial shuttle and the familiar sound effects of Star Wars and just having a huge smile on my face thinking, more Star Wars, more Star Wars. Um, And I just know that's where I'm going to be like in December. You bet. (laughs) I'm going to be that 11-year-old, probably not in the front row, but I'm going to be that 11. (laughs) I'm going to be that 11-year-old again thinking more Star Wars. I think Um, the next time I sit in the front row of a Star Wars movie, it's going to be because my eyes are so bad because I'm old and I'm just in the front. (laughs) Soon enough, my friend. Yo, nice. (laughs) Um, So, Rob, who was your favorite character? Oh, that's... uh, Um, I mean, I... (laughs) I've got a few. I, I, I do like Watto from, from episode one. Mm, me too. Um, um, you know, and if I can just talk Star Trek, I wasn't going to go through the whole show without talking Star Trek, guys. No problem. <laughs> go for it. No problem. We like it too. Uh, I mean, if I could talk Star Trek, I mean, he, he reminds me, I love any episode of Star Trek with Ferengis in, and um, he seems to, he reminds me of a Ferengi. He's like the Ferengi of the Star Wars universe. Um, so I, I do like Watto, um, you know, um, but you think it's some kind of Jedi, <laughs> you know, I love, that. <laughs> I, I, I do, I do that quite a bit in work, you know, and someone's trying to get something out of me and you see their hand waving around and I do quote, I, I do quote that line. Um, but, um, I think, I think really Yoda is my favorite. Um, I love the Dagobah scenes in Empire, Return of the Jedi, um, Yoda and the Force of the Death of Yoda, Yoda themes by John Williams. Uh, the two of my favorite, all time favorite John Williams tracks. Um, and I tell you what I like about Yoda is we've still got a, we've still got a huge mystery behind him. Um, you know, we've got 900 years of, of past and relatively not that much is known about Yoda. And I like that. And I hope that never changes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, yeah, I think there's a sentimental reason why I like Yoda as well. It's because um, it, it was one of the figures, the first figures that my father had bought me. He just went out, come back one day and said, here you go. And I was just like, wow, the Yoda figure. And I think it's just that little sentimental feel has, has uh, stayed with me. So I think Yoda is, is definitely my favorite. It's very wise as well. That's excellent. Um, your favorite Line of dialogue or film moment? Favorite line of dialogue, I think it has to be Yoda, um, which is do or do not, there is no try. Uh, for, for, such, for you know, such a short sentence, I find it um, so difficult to adhere to those words. Mm-hmm. And I, I, but I do try. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Oh, irony. That's great. Hmm. Uh, what is if you collect? What is your favorite collectible that you own? If I collect, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of my reaction to it as well. Um, I mean, I'm surrounded by, as I said, I'm, I'm surrounded right now by uh, kind of Star Wars figures. I've got all my whole loose collection next to me in a glass cabinet. Um, my my wife has this habit of um, sneaking into the geek room when I'm not around especially at around about Christmas time or my birthday to see if there's any missing and she'll do a bit of research. Cause I've also got all the Steve Sansweet books as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and she'll try and get a bit of information out of me. And in 2008, 
uh, for Christmas, she bought me uh, uh, a mint yak face. Um, wow. I was, I was just blown away by it, you know, the fact that she did that research, <laughs> uh, you know, and even though she's not into Star Wars, you know, there I unwrapped a, a yak face. So for me, my favorite, that, that's actually one of my favorite collectibles. That's great. So as far as uh, Star Wars, what particular messages or themes about the saga resonate or speak to you? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think um, for me, the message I get from Star Wars, and I, I, I picked this up as, at a young age, is if you have the right people around you, uh, if you have close friends, close friends who believe in you, family that uh, believe in you, and they have faith in you and you have faith in them, whatever is in front of you, whatever task is in front of you with the right people around you, you can do practically anything. And you've got this small band of people in Star Wars that brought down a whole empire and they trusted each other, believed in each other and they had faith in each other and they had faith in the mission and what they believed in as well. And for me, I picked that up at a young age that um, it's not about having a loads of people around you. It's, have, it's about having the right people around you. And I picked that up from Star Wars. That's wonderful. Uh, yet again, someone answers this question in a way that we've never thought of or heard before. So mm-hmm. that's great, Rob. I agree. It's just... It's that community, uh, which is what Star Wars fandom is to. It's a beautiful community that we're just thrilled to be a part of it and just thrilled again to um, for our friendship, our collaboration, and uh, Cough with Kenobi and the Bearded Trio. That's a, that's a, that's a great um, tandem, and we're, we're thrilled to be a part of it. Rob, where can listeners reach out to you and get in touch with you to say hello or ask you a question? Um, they can contact me via email if they want to rob at the bearded trio.com um they can also um just go to the website and click on about us uh www.thebeardedtrio.com um and we also have facebook and twitter accounts as well so just, just type in the bearded trio and you will find us you bet and we will of course certainly have those uh link to our show notes rob wainford thanks so much for being a part of uh the show today and being a, a blogger and uh just being you and everything you do for Star Wars and fandom. Uh, Have a wonderful new year, and we can't wait to talk to you in the future. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on the show, and cheers cheers to a spectacular 2015. May the force be with you. Our topic for show number 30 is vintage Kenner Star Wars collecting. What is it about this classic line that is so endearing? What are some of your prized moments concerning the collectibles, and which are some of your favorites? Joining us on this topic is Mark Belomo of the Ultimate Guide to Vintage Star Wars Action Figures, 1977 to 1985. In 300 words or less, be sure to send us an email or MP3 with your thoughts, comments, questions, and opinions to feedback at coffeewithkenobi.com. I like the sound of that. Chewie, get us out of here! If you would like to respond to our question of the show, have a comment, or just want to say hello, send us an email or mp3 at feedback at coughwithkenobi.com. Or if you have a specific question or comment for either of us individually, email us at danz at coughwithkenobi.com or Corey C at coughwithkenobi.com or visit us at coughwithkenobi.com and click on the Contact Us section or comment on one of the stories featured on the site. If you enjoy the show, please write a review in iTunes. You can also like the show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash coughwithkenobi as well as keep up to date on our Twitter feed at twitter.com forward slash coughwithkenobi. You can also find us on Tumblr at coughwithkenobi.tumblr.com. If you enjoy the jazz music, download the album Eye to Eye by Steve Torok on iTunes. Give the evacuation code signal. That's it for show number 29 of Coffee with Kenobi. A big thank you to Rob Wayne for, for sharing a cup of coffee with us and discussing the year in Star Wars. Be sure to check out The Bearded Trio for all the latest information on Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and John Williams. Thanks to Rob at the Bearded Trio, to Randy and Luke from Legends Library, media specialist Lisa, comic scribe Matt, our bloggers Melinda, Becca, Pam, Craig, James, Jay, Jeff, Troy, 
Joe, Ryder, Alex, and Father James. Thanks also to everyone who contributed to this show, and to all of you out there who listen to and email Coffee with Kenobi each and every week. Don't forget to send us your comments, questions, and opinions on the topic for show number 30, Vintage Kenner Star Wars Collecting. This is the podcast you're looking for. This podcast is not endorsed by the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm Limited. It is intended for entertainment and informational purposes only. The official Star Wars website can be found at www.starwars.com. Star Wars, all names, sounds, and any other Star Wars-related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Disney and their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Coffee with Kenobi unless otherwise indicated. There's no one here. Move along. Move along.